Welcome back to Rainmaker University, guys. It's Ann Feinstein here with my illustrious partner, Mr. Randy Gage. And today we're going to be talking about a really exciting topic. And that is, you know, if you want greater impact, then you've got to be more compelling. And so we're going to be talking about compelling invitations today and giving you a, you know, really good understanding of why this is what we call a parachute skill. In other words, you should be able to jump out of a plane with a parachute. Hopefully it opens up and you come flying down into any country or any city and you could just go right out there and start inviting and doing it in, in a compelling way. Now, I have to say that being compelling starts with how you think. <laughs> it starts with how, you know, I always say you go first. It has a lot to do with, you know, the way you're thinking and the way you get into your conversations and, you know, having a certain amount of passion. And I say, you know, turn the passion meter up yourself so that when you go out there and you're talking to people, you're excited about what you're doing. And, you know, I kind of think of it, Randy, like being a talent scout, you know, a really brilliant talent scout, someone who is out there building a global team with an innovative and exciting product concept that's going to take the world by storm, that has a, a really exciting, lucrative compensation plan. You're building this on a global basis and you're using the power of leverage, okay, to really be able to create wealth. And so when you have that kind of mindset, guys, and you go out there to talk to people, well, you know what? It just, it's a transfer of energy. So Randy, talk a little bit about the foundational aspects of a compelling invitation. Yeah, when we say invitations are foundational because it's the nexus of what we do. We're inviting people to watch a video, to join a call, to come to a home or a hotel meeting, to be part of a live stream. It's inviting, inviting, inviting. And it's, you can make arguments with these parasites, parasites, <laughs> I'm coming from my sick bed to this recording today, as you might figure out, some of you watching. You know, <laughs> these parachute skills, why we can argue some of them are kind of the two or three of them are really the money skills. And without a doubt, inviting is the number one money skill because it's the one that will influence your income the most. The more compelling and effective you become at making invitations, the more lucrative your bonus checks are gonna be, plain and simple. Uh, it's a skill that's worth practicing. It's worth role-playing with your spouse, role-playing with your sponsor, and practice inviting your cat, your dog, your goldfish, get in front of the mirror, look at your facial expressions, just get comfortable with language that feels good to you. So, because it's not about scripts, we can give you like templates and guidelines, but ultimately it's always gonna come down to how real, personal and authentic you are. What is your posture? You have to know what you have. So here you have with Rain, a product line of incredible scientific credibility. This uh, fact of the purity and the potency of a seed versus what they grow into, indisputable. The benefits of a direct selling business like Rain versus delivering for a app, driving for a ride share, selling stuff on eBay, trying to monetize a YouTube channel. The other side gig opportunities, this one is so superior. So you got to know that. You got to own that. That has to come across in your posture. It's why self-development is really important. You do that in the morning. Believe me, if you spent 20 minutes reading Think and Grow Rich on Tuesday morning, the people you call on Tuesday night, you will have better results with them because your posture will be better. I like to tell people, have a dream board, you know, big poster pictures of things you want to do, have and become. I have one right over there. 
If I'm making invitation calls, I just want to kind of study that a little bit before I get on the first phone call, send the first text, um, because I just want to remember why I'm doing it. And that's what you need to be doing is remembering why you do that. Um, and then, you know, you look for people who are excited. They respond positively. And the truth is uh, a lot of these are going to be with DMs on social media now. They're going to be with texts and WhatsApp and signal groups. Uh, and there'll be some calls. I like calls, but you know how it is. Basically, you have to text someone in advance and ask them if you can call them these days. Um, but particularly the later millennial generations, they're they're just, you know, you probably do better just sending them invitations on WhatsApp and getting it back and forth. The key is ending on one of those positive ones. And when it's really positive, you got that energy, you want to go and do the next one. And then the rule I always set for myself was, and I would recommend you do the same thing, is you never can end on a bad call, right? So you send a text or you call someone and they go, oh my God, I can't believe you called me for one of those Amway pyramid deals. What a clown you are. I can't, you know, you can't, you're not allowed to end on a call like that. You got to end on a positive one. And then what happens is you you get a positive one, kind of gives you the energy and you want to do another one. Um, you do want to set aside, and we talked about this in some of the earlier modules. It's important you have a block of time scheduled every week just for inviting. 30 minutes, 40 minutes, 60 minutes, just for making invitations. That's the difference between a passive recruiter and an active recruiter. And you want to create this momentum, this mojo, this traction. So when you start rain, uh, and we talk about doing that major blast, honestly, my advice, get your invitation out to at least a hundred people in 10 days or less, because that's what creates the mojo, just the action. And you say, wait a minute, how am I going to sponsor all those people? How am I going to train? You're not going to, they're not going to sponsor. Me. And, and this is kind of a misconception. People think, well, I'm supposed to sponsor everyone I know in terrain. No, you have no control over who you sponsor in terrain. They all make the decision. Your control is who you should offer it to. And when you really know and own what you have, then you know that comes with the responsibility that you should share it. And that's your responsibility is to make an invitation to everyone to see a presentation. And then where it goes from there, it's up to them. So big, big deal is getting this major blast going. Uh, Annie, you want to kind of break that down a little more? Yeah, I want to tell a fast story. <laughs> Talk about a major blast. It was in the middle of a major blast. And David and I were talking to people, talking to people. My brother had walked in to fix a computer. And in the middle of a break between calls, he walks over to David and goes, I'm in. And David looks at him and says, in what? And he says, and he repeats back what he's heard us talking about. <laughs> so major blast, you know, turns the lights on in your house, guys. OK, I'm telling you, it gets that energy that Randy's talking about going. And, you know, there'll be a story I'll tell forever and ever because it's absolutely what gets things moving is a major blast. And that's getting enough people into the top of your funnel so that you start to I want you to imagine like coating a funnel with lots of honey. OK, that's the idea of a major blast is you're coating that whole funnel down. And so what happens OK, eventually you start to drip out the honey and that's the, the candidates that are looking at your opportunity. They're looking at the tool that you gave them. They're having conversations with you. So the faster you can get those invitations done, OK, in a way like Randy was describing, the faster, the better it is, because you know what, guys, it's actually easier to build a business fast than it is to build it slow. Let me repeat that. Building it fast is easier than building it slow. Because what happens is when you build it fast, everyone feels that excitement, okay? You've got things going. People are talking to each other. You've got an energy going that's not only yourself, but it transcends into the team that you're building. 
And so it also, and importantly, gives you a great, greater story to tell the next time you're talking to people that this is what's happening. This is the profitability that you're starting to see. You want to be in that profit mode because it tells the story the following period and the period after that easier and faster for you. It gives you a real credibility. So let's talk about some of these things, okay? You wanna be using external tools, okay? Because you don't wanna be the message, you wanna be the messenger. And you wanna be edifying, okay, what they're going to see in that message and doing it in a simple, easy way that gets people excited you know, looking forward to it, letting them know, you know, if it's a short video or it's a short um, explanation overview or a short business and product overview and making sure that they understand what it is without being hypey. There's no need and there's no need to be pressurizing. There's no need to be hyping because you know what? It's just the transfer of energy, okay? And getting them to agree to take a look at something and getting back to you and not putting, you know, any you know, specific yes or no onto it. It's, you know, either way is okay. Okay. You take the pressure off, but you do it in a way that captures their attention. And we're going to be talking about a couple of examples for that, but you want them to see a video. You want them to come to a live presentation or to an online presentation. I mean, this is what you're going to be in inviting people to, or a grand opening, the first step along the way in getting that ladder of escalation started for your candidate to see a bigger and bigger and bigger picture. But it has to start with you, okay? That's where the funnel starts. And this invitation can be to review, as I said, a video, uh, whether it's two minutes, whether it's eight minutes, 15 minutes, and we'll talk about that. Uh, taking a look at a brochure, or you know, we all talk about this gorgeous brochure of enjoying the ultimate lifestyle opportunity. Okay. Again, that could be with meeting somebody along the path that you're not going to see them again. And so, you know, you can strike up, strike up a conversation with them that's compelling and they want to take a look at this brochure and get back to you because you have all your details there. Could be your grand opening. Okay. To come and check out the products. If you're excited about these products. You want to tell other people about them. You want to get them around. You want them to sample it. You want them to understand the power behind seed source nutrition. Guys, this is a breakthrough in the nutritional con concept and industry. You want them to understand the power of what they have here. You want to show them either a flip chart presentation, okay? And that you'll, you'll find that in your kit. So you'll be able to look at and share that flip chart presentation in a one-to-one -one or small group setting or inviting them to an online presentation or inviting them to a home meeting or inviting them to a larger group meeting. It's a matter of taking them through a ladder of escalation. Now, you wanna find out what is their preferred, I like to find out what do they prefer? Do they prefer a text on their phone? Do they prefer WhatsApp? Do they like uh, Facebook Messenger, uh, an email? You know, So that you're working with them with a, the mode of communication that they prefer. And you get into that rhythm with them with that. So you send them the details immediately to show you're serious about what you're doing, okay? The faster you get that information to them, they're gonna say, wow, okay, Mary's on the ball here, okay? Randy's on the ball. Boy, he took care of that and really got me the information I needed to make and uh, to take a look, to be objective, okay? To look at the opportunity, okay? And to allow the tool to do the talking for you. So. I want you to keep this in mind, guys, as you're going through the process of making your invitations, and that is the person that is getting the information from you is thinking along the lines from the very start, can they do what you're doing and do they want to do what you're doing? How does it come across to them? So, Randy, talk about some of the things that you'll be inviting people to. Yeah, let's look at the tools you have specific to RAIN that the company has developed uh, to facilitate this process and to allow you to create stronger duplication. Um, when you're making an invitation for someone to look at RAIN, you're basically divided into two categories. The first category is you're inviting them to see a presentation happening live or you're inviting them to review a tool. 
So let's talk about see a presentation first. What would that mean? Well, it could be a one-on-one -on -one or two-on-one -on -one at a coffee shop with the flip chart, taking them through the be the breakthrough presentation. Could be a home meeting, could be a hotel meeting, or it could be a live stream meeting conducted online. <laughs> the reality is eight out of 10 presentations today are probably done online. Facebook Lives, Zoom meetings, those kind of presentations. Um, but the dynamics, the invitation process, the follow-up process, all that remains the same, whether it's offline or online. But we know, are we getting them to a live presentation or are we inviting them to a tool? So in terms of tools with Rain, you've got uh, some really dynamic, great choices. The first is, of course, our intrigue video. The two-minute video, two minutes and change, the seed of prosperity. That's the what we call a pre-qualifying video. For someone you really don't know, would they be a candidate for the business? Would they be a candidate to become a customer? This video will help you know which of those candidate pathways to send them down. <clears throat> Assuming someone is identified by either the first video or just by the conversation as a candidate to be a customer, then you're gonna send them to the hidden in plain sight, which is about eight minutes, nine minute video, which is about the benefits of seed source nutrition and the rain product line. Uh, and then the third video option is escape the rat race. And that's the general, all-inclusive presentation, all about the lifestyle, business benefits, residual income, product line benefits, the whole science behind the product. It's the full presentation. Um, so there's some really great options there. And then, of course, sometimes you're just inviting someone to use this booklet that Ann just showed you, the Ultimate Lifestyle Business Booklet, because this is what we call a mass market recruiting tool. These are designed, of course, so you could leave them around at the doctor's office, the dentist's office, in the ride share car, in the seat pocket, in the seat pocket, in the airplanes, anywhere where somebody could come across it that you won't meet any other way. So be sure, of course, buy these 50 or 100 at a time, just keep circulating them all the time, but make sure you have your info in this context, uh, contact box on the back of the booklet. Can I just uh, say something then, about that booklet though, Randy? I have to say that what I love about that booklet is that it really helps people to get a, a sense of what the whole idea of leverage is about. The whole idea of having a business that is you know, around the clock, and you may find that somebody sees this booklet that would love to be able to do business in one of the countries that we're, we're open in. And they see all the countries and they see the time zones and they see, they start to get a vision of what this ultimate lifestyle could be like. So guys, I can't impress upon you how important this booklet is for opening people to the possibilities of what RAIN can offer them. Sorry, Randy, I wanted to just say that because it's such an important booklet. It's it's a sexy tool. <laughs> There's no other way to say it. <laughs> it's a really sexy, compelling way to present what you have to offer with Rain. Um, the other thing, the dynamic where this comes into play is you can sometimes hand this out personally because you'll be meeting someone and you might never see them again. So it could be a waiter in a restaurant uh, in a city you're visiting, could be a flight attendant on an airplane, uh, ride share driver, and you just, you, you, you really think they're a good candidate for the business. You don't know if you're ever going to see them again. Uh, so I go to my old standby, you know, I love to tell people, you know, you're too good <laughs> doing what you do to be doing what you do. And then I go with my next old standby. <laughs> These two phrases have made me millions of dollars, people. Oh, golden nuggets, one. guys. Write these things down. <laughs> golden nuggets. Yeah, and the second one is just the if I will you formula, which is, hey, if I give you this booklet, would you take 10 minutes and look it through 
And if you like what you see, give me a shout. And my contact info is on the back. Very non-threatening. It's like they just made the announcement. The plane is going to altitude. The seatbelt light is just about to come on. And that's when you give it to the flight attendant. Hey, you're, you're too good doing what you do. But if I would you. And you may, you may never see him again. All it was was a booklet. You took a shot. It's always worth taking a shot. So that those are the particular tools with Rain that you're inviting to. Um, but we wanted to before we um, we couldn't really um, do this training without saying, "Hey, let's just give you some hot tips on things that will make your invitations work better." Right. So Randy was saying before about qualifying questions, and I always found that to be interesting because. The biggest issue for most people, Randy, is getting them from the friend zone into <laughs> talking about business. I mean, that's the thing where a person will, you know, it's like never land the airplane. They just keep circling and circling and circling, and they're trying to figure out a way to make that connection over. So one of the easiest ways to do that is to just say, hey, you know, are you doing any side hustles? Okay, person say yes or no or whatever, and we move into that conversation next, or hey, would you be interested in taking a look at a breakthrough wellness concept that, you know, would work really well with what you're doing? <laughs> so, you know, yes or no, and gee, they're going to get into a conversation about it. The, the, what we say is qualifying questions just to see if there's an interest. Another one might be, are you using leverage to build wealth? Now, most people might not even know what you mean by that. Well, what do you mean by that? And then you can get into the idea of the ultimate lifestyle, 24 hours a day, being able to build in so many different countries, working with people, all different types of skill sets, you know, the fun you're having. It's just a way of getting a person to take a look at what you have to offer. So I like this one also, and that is, you know, what you were saying is that you're too good at what you do to be doing what you do. And I stopped somebody in the middle of a conversation earlier today with that <laughs> in, in the conversation because I wanted to highlight how much I appreciated what she was doing from a customer service point of view. And, you know, what was interesting is that they stepped back. She giggled. She said, well, thank you. OK, and that's the whole point. If you really mean that and you're saying it with with, you know, an honest compliment behind it. People will receive that in a beautiful way. Randy, talk about some of the ones that you've been using that you found helpful. Yeah, these ones you're, you're hearing from Anna are put in the category of what we call the get to the point. They're basically one step um, questions that directly get to your ability to extend them an invitation to look at something. Um, so the more you tailor this to them, you know, I'm impressed at the job you do here. I think you'd be amazing in my business. Hey, Nancy, I know you're an amazing school teacher. I've got a business that's all about teaching and training. And I think you would crush it with this. Would you be willing to look at something? Um, hey, Jimmy, I know you love to play, you know, my softball player I'm working with, right? You know, that I play with. Hey, Jimmy, I know you're all about softball and getting in shape. I actually got a business, a wellness business that's really got some product line, pretty good for athletic performance. I think you'd be really good at it because you're so wellness oriented. Would you be willing to take a look at something? Or if I sent you a link to a video, would you be willing? So just customize it like that. So um, anyone you know who's teaching, training, presenting, those are naturals for the business. So when you see people in those kind of things, just tailor the invitation and get straight to the point. This The, the other kind of group of uh, uh, thing we think of or that we would talk to you about is the, I thought of you because. You want to share some examples of that, Anne? Yeah, I love that one because it is a direct compliment to what they're doing, all right? And I think that's one of the things that Randy was pointing out earlier, and that is connecting it to a benefit for them. What is a benefit for them? Why you're thinking of them? And I may say something like, I'm working on a new project. 
I always like to start with that. I'm working on a new project and I think it has a ton of, pot of potential. And I thought of you because I'd love to work with you or we've been talking about doing something together or, you know, our teaching skills are great for this or you're an, an athlete. And boy, I'll tell you, that I've heard some really incredible stories coming from people who are athletes, professional athletes. You know, all of those make the connection to that person. Um, you might say something like, I'm helping people earn income online. And I thought of you because we've talked about, you know, wanting to make extra income online. Or I thought, you know, you've got the skill sets that would be so fabulous for this based on, and then you connect it to something that they're doing, something that they're interested in, something that is meaningful to them. Uh, I also have said this, and this is another one that's very good for rain. And that is, I was just introduced to the purest nutrient rich superfoods on the market today. It's actually 20 to 30 times more potent than anything else out there. And I thought of you because they might be oriented towards fitness or they're into wellness or they've, you know, they're always looking at good things for their family. Make that connection. But I then, thought of you because I know you're vegan. I thought oh. of you because I know you don't eat gluten or you're gluten free. I thought of you because you're a softball player. I thought of you because you do yoga. I thought of you because you do Pilates. I thought of you because I know you're a health conscious person. I thought of you because I know you exercise all the time. I thought of you because I know you wanted to, you're working on losing weight. I thought of you because I know you're training for a marathon. All there's like a hundred thousand things in the health, wellness, science, athletic sphere that any one of these I thought of you could work amazing. And you know what? It becomes fun after a while when you start to feel that confidence come in putting this together where it just it feels very natural feels not very natural to have these conversations with people because it's all about them. It's taking it the pressure off of who you are. You're just that person that's transferring the excitement, the energy, and the passion. Now, we want to relieve the pressure, guys. We don't want to be pressurizing people, okay? So we always like to say, this, this may or may not be for you. And either way, it's okay. Say that to yourself, okay? That, that whatever the conversation is, it's going to be okay. Yes or no, it's going to be okay. You want them to agree to look at the information you're giving them, that you're offering them. You want them to accept the offer. That's the whole point behind this. So you don't want them to, you know, have their heads, you know, oh my gosh, you know, I have to say yes because it's Randy or Ann or Mary or Joe or whoever. It's okay. Either way is okay. And people appreciate that because they don't want to feel pressurized about something. And so, you know, like I may say that either this may or, be, may or may not be a good fit for you. Either way, it's okay. All right. And then it, you go back to if I would you, and then you send it over to them, get the information to them. So talk a little bit more about that. If I would you, if I would you, Randy. Yeah, I feel like we conquered that well. It, it can work for to the video, to a home meeting, to anything. If I bought you a ticket for this presentation, would you come along with me? If I send you a link to a two-minute video, would you watch it and call me as soon as you're done? If I would, you. It's just a good formula. So um, I think you guys, you can kill with that. Um, let's talk about just some of the important factors overall for all these invitations. Yeah, I think first and foremost is you want to use the follow-up in the invitation. OK, because you don't want to have to try to track somebody down or run after someone, you know, it makes it just so much easier. It's in the flow of the conversation that if you're sending it to them, would they do that? And I know you're going to have questions. OK, it's going to be natural. You know, how about if we speak right after you take a look at this? Is this a good time for you to take a look at this now? Do you have time now? Do you have two minutes? If it's the peak interest, do you have a few minutes if it's looking at the video, the eight minute video. Do you have a few minutes? I'll send it over. It's a 15 minute overview on the business and the products. So you get a sense of where they're at and then you set up the, the follow up, you know, buzz me back after you looked at it. And I say, you know, I'll be around this evening, let's say seven o'clock. Does that work for you? 
so that you set up the follow-up. That also is a professional way to handle things, guys, because it, you know it's all in the follow-up. Everything is in the follow-up. Because so at that point, you're going to find out what their interests are. Are they interested in learning more about the products? Are they interested in learning more about the business? Have you piqued their interest? You know, where are you going to take them next? You're the tour guide. You're the, you know, the um, uh, the talent scout. You're listening to how they respond and also how quickly they respond. Because I don't know about you, but I want to play some tennis with people who hit the ball back. Okay, back and forth, back and forth. I think that's important. And having that follow up is really, really, really key in the steps in using a compelling invitation. Would it be okay if we talked again at seven o'clock? Would it be okay if we talked tomorrow at nine? Set up the follow-up. And then end with vision. Randy, talk a little bit about that. When you're ending with vision, you're kind of creating expectations um, in terms of, hey, if you see what I do, we could help a ton of people together. Uh, if you see what I think is here, we could make a ton of money together. If you uh, see what's real, this is really about, you know, if you see what this is, you know, hey, with your teaching skills, this is a business you could totally crush it. Hey, with your ability as a coach, the way you work with the kids in the little league and, you know, the high school team you coach, you bring those coaching skills to this, you could be amazing at this. Just kind of setting expectation and getting them their eyes a little bit further down. We want to raise their eyes above the horizon so they're not thinking about, hey, I've got to watch a 12-minute video, but they're thinking about what is the desired outcome that could happen if they watch that 12-minute video. Mm. That's a very important aspect here, guys, because now you have that's compelling them to go and take a look. So let's talk about some of the important factors that we've covered. Number one, the most important thing is you got to do this with posture. And when I say posture, yes, sit up straight, you know, <laughs> and get excited. And if you have to jump up and down in your chair, you know, do a couple of uh, jumping jacks, get the energy going. I like to listen to some great music ahead of time get myself together. But the important thing is you do it with posture, meaning that you have a list, okay? That you're not talking to two people, that you're not talking to five people, that you have created your list of people that you're gonna go out and you're gonna sit down, like Randy said, for that particular period of time, 60 to, to 90 minutes that you've set aside to make compelling invitations. Okay, number two, that you're edifying the value of the tool or the presentation that they're going to see so that you make it something that they're excited to be receiving. You know, you can't wait to get that invitation. You can't wait to get the link to go watch it or to go look at it or to look at that brochure. I can't wait till I have a break so I can go look at that ultimate lifestyle brochure because the way you have set it up. Okay, you want to share the problems that this information can solve. Hmm. Okay, imagine. I don't think there's very many people that want to, you know, stand on their feet all day long for the rest of their lives. Everybody's looking for something, you know, an option is what I have in my mind. Everybody's looking for, you know, a better lifestyle. Everybody's looking for, you know, to have better health. People are going to bed every night praying that somebody's going to come along and share something with them. And you walk up and hand the brochure, or you walk up at that moment and you bring them one of these tools and it changes their lives and it changes their family's life and the community. It's a godsend, okay? It truly can be a godsend, but you have to have that energy and that posture to do it. You have to look at the value of what you're offering people. You have to be willing to make the follow-up. And guys, that means sometimes stepping out of your comfort zone and not feeling pushy OK, because I hear some people say, I don't want to feel pushy. Well, the opposite is being mediocre. OK, the opposite is not having any purpose. The opposite is not having a business that gets traction. OK, you have to be putting it into a framework so that you're being effective and you're teaching someone how to be effective. Whatever you're doing, they will see if they can do the same. And if you're setting them up for success by doing it according to 
a systematic approach that we're suggesting here with these steps, guess what, guys? Okay, you're going to have that duplication process occurring. Every activity that you do has to be tracked. Okay, and the best way to track that is like we said, go back to your MPO, you have your list. Okay, you put, you've started your list of 25 in here. I hope you have 100. So you have great posture. You have a way of tracking it. So you know what you gave them. You know when you're following up. You know what ne what is going to come next in the system that you're of tools and the escalation of the vision that you're giving them. And you're moving people along according to their interest. Okay. And you're doing it in a way that just makes them so excited about what you're sharing with them and you're not overloading them. That's the other thing. I see people making that mistake, Randy. They get so excited. They want to send people everything. Hmm. <laughs> and then the person gets all this stuff and thinks, okay, when I have time, I'll look at this. And you know when that is? It's called never. Okay, because they keep putting it off and putting it off because the kids came in and this happened and that happened and the, the dog had diarrhea, the cat threw up. Stuff happens. Make it simple enough in little tiny chunks that a person can look at it. So now let's talk about the fun part. Okay, and that is what are the activities and call to action for this module? Here's what I would like to wrap this up with. Some of you know, Anne and Jeff Higginson, your new president, and I worked together with a company that uh, got sold. Um, and until that sale happened, we created a phenomenon in the network marketing profession. And personally, what that meant to me is more than $10 million um, in bonus checks. And here's the thing. I really, really, really want every RAIN partner to know. I don't remember the number if it's 137 or 139. But it was one of those two numbers. That's the number of people that I sponsored into that company. So when you see these network marketing books or e-courses or Facebook seminars and they say, you know, you just sponsor one person a month or, you know, you sponsor five people and two will be serious and you work with it. No, the people who are multi-million dollar producers, they invite all the time. Remember when we talked about active versus passive recruiting? Here's the thing I want every RAIN partner to understand. You could sponsor five, six, or eight people a month, every month. To make that happen, and you could build an extraordinary worldwide business in the 40-some countries that RAIN operates in. To do that, would be simple, not easy, but simple. It would start with just going back to the earlier module on meeting people. So, okay, I'm committing to that skill of how to meet people. And I'm going to be meeting people all the time, and I'm going to be migrating them to my candidate list. Then I'm going to get really good at inviting and I'm going to follow this training that Ann and Randy did for me. And I'm going to practice and role play and practice and practice and practice more until I make amazing, incredible invitations. Because I know that Rain has developed the tools, the standardized presentation, and has the gravitas of the product line, of the business system. It has the gravitas that if I continually bring candidates through a funnel and put them in front of these presentations, I will continually be enrolling new partners. And some are going to do it now, and some are going to do it later, and some are going to do it never, and that's okay. That's their choice. It's not mine. My job is not to sponsor every person in the world in terrain. 
My, my job is not to sponsor everyone I know at Terrain. My job is to present an invitation to everyone I know about rain and then let them make the choice. Um, with social media, you can meet people literally every day. And what I want you to understand, you don't have to be an influencer. You don't need 800,000 people following you. You don't have to take ads. And you don't have to be Gary V. You don't have to be a content factory producing 25 posts every day. I'm not a big believer in the, okay, you got to, uh, you know, like 25 posts every day and share 18 posts every day and comment on 10 posts every day. And I'm afraid if you get too far down that rabbit hole, then you get inauthentic. It kind of the commission breath thing. You just seem a little too urgent, a little too desperate. If you would just be on social media and then get, just be there. OK, because if you and I'm talking to you, baby boomers, my fellow baby boomers who are in rain, if you're talking to somebody 25, 35 years old, the first thing they're going to do is go look you up on social media. And if you don't have accounts there, they're going to say, I don't think I want to sponsor this with this person because I don't think they understand how the world works today. They're not cool. <laughs> <laughs> right. The, now, I will tell you, I think I hate social media. Social media is very dangerous. I hate what it's doing to the young people of our world today. And I also know this is how all of the millennial generations, they all live in their phone. They all live on social media. And that's how they communicate. And that's how they you meet people. So I don't think you need a $500 e-course on how to be a social media expert. Just have profiles there and then like and interact and share in the topics that you're interested in. If you're a cat person, talk to cat people. If you got 17 York Yorkies like the Feinsteins, you're going to talk to dog people. You know, if you macrame, if you knit, if you play badminton, if you take Pilates, if you do Orange Theory, if you do uh, martial arts, just look for area, you know, the things. What we're looking for is people of consciousness, right? People working on themselves, going to taking classes, learning things, online education. It's the same offline and online. Meet people, migrate them to the list. Develop, let the relationship develop and invite them when the time is right. And if you really make that commitment, go back and watch that meeting people module, really get it down and then practice the stuff we're talking about here. Just kind of think uh, for you. And if you're new, just do this stuff to start and you're going to kill it. You're going to make people who've been in rain for five years look silly because you're going to grow so much faster than they did. And for you guys who've been partners for five years, eight years, 13 years, I'm challenging you to rethink your world. I say, what if I just, I trust Randy at face value enough to do this, that I will open up my mind to the possibility that I could enroll five or eight or 10 partners every month with rain. And that after a period of years, I will have enrolled 82 people or 113 people or 164 people. And I could have created an amazing, worldwide business that is helping literally tens of thousands of people have better wellness and live better lifestyles. So that's my challenge to you guys to uh, take what Ann and I are sharing with you here from our hearts and say, this is what you have. Don't waste it. Make the most of it. Peace. Bye, guys. <laughs>